are people who assume that there are two churches, one Christian and the other Catholic, as if Catholics were not Christians. One day, a man came to the parish they served in Japan. He said he had been puzzling out the difference and wanted to verify his conclusion. He said, the difference between Christianity and Catholicism is that Christians worship Jesus Christ and Catholics worship Mary, right? I'm not sure he believed my attempt to correct his misunderstanding. After all, there were two statues of Mary outside the church and another inside. Since the church exists in order to proclaim Christ, we must be more careful about what messages our art, architecture, and devotions convey to those with whom we hope to share our faith in the Lord. Even we Catholics, if we're not careful, sometimes forget that anything we say of Mary is actually something we say about Christ and his people. Today's feast, which, though the doctrine is much older, only replaced the Feast of the Circumcision in 1974, is one example. From the earliest days of the Church, we've struggled with the reality of the Incarnation. If Jesus be God, can he be fully human? If he be as human as I am, can he be God? In different times and places, and even on different days of my own life, we tend to go back and forth on the issue, sometimes emphasizing the Lord's divinity while forgetting his humanity, and at other times emphasizing his humanity while forgetting his divinity. Keeping both truths in mind and heart is difficult. When the bishops at the Council of Ephesus in 431 declared that Mary is the mother of God, they were correcting the idea that because Christ is God, he could not be a real human being. The Council Fathers used the one absolutely human trait, we all have mothers, to affirm that Jesus, whom we worship as God, is a real human being. After all, he has a mom. They were talking about Jesus, not Mary. The other side of the conundrum, whether the man Jesus is really God, was the subject of other early ecumenical councils, notably Nicaea in 325 and Constantinople in 381. But today's feast is not just about a fifth century theological dispute. Any feast is about us as well because in our baptism we are united with Christ. We honor Mary not because she's some near goddess. We honor her because she wholeheartedly did something we are all called to do. She said, yes. When God's messenger told her that God had a task, a vocation for her, Mary responded, let it be done to me as you say. Her yes saying made her the mother of God and a model of what the church is. We are the community of those who in our baptism have said yes. Each of us is presented with the same vocation as Mary. God says to you and to me, make my son present in the world, forgive sins, bring healing, live with faith that my love is stronger than your death. By word and deed, assure the world of my love. And what answer do we give? Well, in our baptism, we have given the same answer as Mary. Yes, Father, I will give your son a human body, my human body, so that the world might know you. The humanity of Christ will be shown today in your humanity, in our humanity. The divinity of Christ will be shown today in his working through you, through me. Today, right here, we are called to be what the Council of Ephesus said of Mary. Today and every day, we are the mothers of God. We are the fathers of God.